Tanning furs is generally more complicated and more difficult than tanning buckskin because you've got the grain layer on the hide, which is resistant to the moisture of your dressing passing through. And then also because you've got the fur that's gonna be holding moisture, insulating the hide and making it dry a lot slower, which means you have to spend a lot more time working the hide. Also, rabbit hides are one of the trickier to do because they're quite thin and not a very strong hide. So you have to work harder in order to soften them while being gentle enough that you're not going to risk tearing the hide. So I am going to demonstrate tanning of rabbit hides today and I'm going to be demonstrating a technique that I have yet to show to my students in my courses or on my YouTube channel and that is a technique called freeze tanning. Freeze tanning is actually just a way of going about brain tanning or smoke tanning, which are technically the same thing. You can brain tan using other dressings, not just brains. And the real part that actually solidifies the tan is smoke tanning. So it has a lot of different names. But freeze tanning is a way to make the process of brain slash smoke tanning a little bit easier. So it's a wonderful technique to know if you live in a climate that gives you temperatures below about 15 degrees Fahrenheit when you're getting into that cold that is so cold that it's a dry cold. So things freeze and then the moisture actually evaporates out of the hides, a process called sublimation, going from solid straight into gaseous form without ever getting wet in between. If you don't live in a climate that affords you nice low temperatures for freeze tanning, you can do the same process or similar using a really powerful freezer, which as you can see looking around me is what I'm gonna be doing today because it rarely gets that cold here. We get some windows in the winter where we might get into the low teens or single digits, but it's certainly not happening in July. So I'm going to be demonstrating freeze tanning using a freezer. And the first thing that I do is I take my dried skins and I go ahead and dunk them in water and completely saturate them. Some folks take dried hides and they only work the dressing in from the flesh side, but it's really, really hard to get it all the way through when you've got a hide in a state that is raw hide in the middle. So I think it's much, much better to soak them so that they are 100% completely saturated and then leave them out where the fur side can actually dry and then dress them. First step into the bucket and this is just water and it is warm but not hot water. That's really key. So warm water is going to relax the fibers, soak them up faster and allow them to kind of open up and absorb better. Hot water could potentially cook them and destroy the hides. So warm water, plenty of it, and then I'm just going to be dunking the hides and leaving them in here and then I'll be checking them every hour or so and moving them around and waiting until they're really nice and wet and sloppy and flexible like a wet noodle. That's what I'm looking for to know that all of those fibers, even in the very middle of the hide, are no longer hide. They are no longer glued to one another. They are completely wet and loose and stretching past one another. I generally case skin the rabbit. So take the skin off in a tube like this. And then I typically open that up to tack them out so that they dry quicker. But I do have one here that was dried in the tube on, on a hide stretching frame. So you see two examples. Okay, so it has been a little bit over an hour. And as you can see, the hides are no longer papery. They are totally loose and floppy and flexible. What they are not is completely stretchy yet. So the hide is basically soaked up but the fibers are still stuck together by those glutes. So I need to do something to break those fibers apart and allow them to move independently. What I would do in order to do that is work the whole surface of the hide gently because rabbit hides are not very strong and when those fibers are still stuck together, they're even less strong. But pulling until I go from the kind of see-through translucent color to a slightly more opaque color. So I've been working this little spot back and forth in different directions for a moment. And I want to show you the difference. So see how right here, it's a little bit more uniformly white and opaque versus right here, it's more translucent. And I can see right through to that black color of the skin. So this is what I want the whole thing to be. Another thing I could do would be to have a cable set up and work it back and forth over the cable. So I'm going to squeeze these out so that they're less sloppy wet in the fur. I'm going to leave these 
in the sun to have that fur dry out a little bit, but skin side down so that they won't dry at all, the skin. Pretty lovely, huh? See that there? These yellow parts are the parts where the fibers are still glued together and they're more translucent. And now as I pull and stretch, you can see that that yellow bits disappear. And now it's all white and more uniform. So again, what I'm looking for to know that this is nice and opened up and ready to accept the dressing is that it feels not just loose and sloppy and flexible, but stretchy, that it gives when I pull on it. Hides are gonna absorb the dressing best if they are slightly damp, but not sloppy wet, just like a sponge absorbs more on a wet counter if it's a wrung out sponge versus a totally dry sponge, it just pushes the moisture around and a sloppy wet sponge, it's absorptive, but it doesn't have room to absorb any more than it's already full of. Hides are the same way. All right, so here is my dressing, my mixture of egg yolks, warm water, olive oil, and Dr. Bronner's lavender is my preference, Castile soap. pour my dressing and do my best to really work it into the edges. Once I had done that manually, that is when working in the dressing and doing the freeze thaw cycles really makes a difference. Nicely froze up rabbits, several freeze thaw cycles in. See how the fibers are all popped apart and white here from the freezing. That's what we're after. So I have had these hides take up the dressing a lot better, a lot faster than hides that I'm not doing the freeze thaw. And this one is already nicely thawed because it wasn't super wet. I'd been working it for a while. So definitely been an excellent technique, although it didn't save me the work of manually opening the hides on the cable. That I still did and it was probably slightly easier, but I did my test piece and the pieces that had been in the freezer and really didn't notice enough of a difference to make it seem like that's something that I would want to do. So just the soaking and then the opening up and then the dressing and that's where the freeze thaw cycle really comes in. So I'm alternating direction as I go around the hide, pulling first along the spine and then across the spine and then it angles to the spine, being sure that I constantly am moving that hide so that all of those fibers are pulling away from one another rather than getting glued in one spot. All right, here are four different five different rabbits in various stages of the brain tanning slash smoke tanning process. So there is this one, which is a fully finished and softened, and you can see it is luscious and bouncy, stretchy. This one, which is the opposite, still frozen solid right out of the freezer after one round of the dressing being worked in and then frozen into it. This one here you can see still has some moisture in it and some drier areas by those different colors. You can see this one is very nicely dressed, really soft and stretchy and bouncy, but it still has a lot of drying to do. I wanna show you the difference between a hide that is mostly dry and one that is totally finished. Obviously one of the indicators is I can feel the moisture in this one, and this one feels totally dry. And part of that is feeling the temperature difference. I can feel the cool with my fingers, whereas this one is totally warm, and it's really about ambient temperature. It's a warm day today. So this one feels warm to the touch, while this one feels cool to the touch. So the other important indicator is how it stretches. So this one that still has some moisture, when I pull it, it bounces back very slightly, but it mostly stays in that stretched out position versus this one, when I pull it, see how it bounces right back? 
bounces back, that is a sign that there's no more moisture in here and it's returning to its natural shape as soon as I let go of it. So several different stages and I will be taking them all through so that they are all luscious and dry and soft and stretchy and ready to go like this one. We had a good dousing rain last night, so it is moist everywhere and it is still nice and cloudy. So everything is humid and fire danger is much lower than it's been all summer. And I am psyched about the smoking setup I've got using the awning of my spring bar tent and my winter well stove. So I'm able to hang out in the shade under the fly of the awning watching my furs smoke and the winter well stove is absolutely perfect because not only is it small and mobile but it has this water jacket that goes around the chimney and what you want for smoking hides is for a smoke that is cool enough not to damage the hides and that keeps the hides well away from the smoldering coals. So the chimney makes distance between it and the coals and then the water jacket on the stove absorbs a lot of the heat as it goes up the chimney. So I have nice cool smoke and my hides are turning out like a dream and I don't have to worry about any sparks or flames because it's a whole sealed system. So working awesome for smoking my furs and these are gonna turn out beautifully. Luscious, soft fur awaits you. Hooray.